Big show this morning. Don't go anywhere. Meanwhile, we'll kick it off this hour right now with President-elect Donald Trump entering office on Friday with historically low approval ratings. According to an ABC Washington Post poll, his favorability is at just 40 percent, making him the least popular incoming president in the past four decades. Trump fired back on Twitter. He says, quote, the same people who did the phony election polls and were so wrong are now doing approval rating polls. They are rigged just like before. Joining us this morning to talk more about it is the five co-host uh, and author of We the People. Juan Williams is in New York. Uh, Juan, good to see you. Good morning. Your take on these polls. Well, what takes me away is that if you look inside the polls, Republican support for Donald Trump is down. He's down around 50 percent. But what really is hurting him in these polls, Maria, independents, they really have not they're, they're, they bought off Donald Trump since the election. So what we see here is really he's got to do something more, I think, to impress his base and to try to persuade people who are persuadable in the middle, people who previously were in his camp, to come back home. I think he's had some trouble with some of the tweets, the tweeting not only at John Lewis, the congressman who said he's illegitimate in terms of the election, but also, I think the tweeting at people like Meryl Streep and even criticizing Arnold Schwarzenegger's ratings on The Apprentice. Mm, well, you know what? I, I, I want to bring in right now Texas Congressman Louis Gomer to talk more about this. Good to see you, Congressman. Thank you. Marie. Thank you so much Good for joining here. us. Thank you. I don't know. I, call me a cynic, but I don't believe any of this stuff anymore. I, you know, I, I just I, it, it, I'm having a hard time believing all of this negativity around Donald Trump, particularly as we see consumer sentiment soaring. People are more optimistic about the economy than I've seen in a long time. What's your take? Well. I heard yesterday that uh, one of the polls, they only had 23 percent Republicans tested. Another poll, only 24 percent tested. So when you get down into the weeds, as one was saying, Trump is still right that these are rigged polls. And uh, the truth is, I mean, all over uh, East Texas, where I live, I just came from, People are getting ready to hire again. The call went out for oil and gas industry. We're going to start hiring again. We're going to start drilling again. People are excited all over Texas where I go. And so uh, the polls are not talking to the people that elected Donald Trump. They're excited. They're fired up. We're excited. But you, you say, you know, pardon you for being cynical, but Maria, the expression here in Washington, maybe you weren't aware of, is the more cynical you get, it's never enough to catch up. Yeah. Well, so that's, you got a way to after go. After the election and after I turn on, you know, uh, so many different news uh, stations and all I hear is this, you know, pounding of Donald Trump. And I'm like, what? Anyway, we got to get to let, Let's not give it any more energy because it's, I don't believe it anyway. <laughs> Senate confirmation hearings. These are this is important. They're continuing today. Democrats are expected to grill the president elect's pick for the EPA. Scott Pruitt, he's going to really have a grilling, I'm sure, as well as Health and Human Services nominee Congressman Tom Price. Uh, Secretary of Commerce nominee Wilbur Ross will also testify today. He released his opening statements just a minute ago. We want to bring you this opening statement. Here's what Wilbur Ross says. I've made my livelihood for over five decades decades dealing in international commerce. I think I've probably had more direct experience than any prior cabinet nominee has had with unfair trade in the steel business, in the textile business, in the auto parts business and other sectors. Congressman, do you think Ross will have trouble in today's hearings? Well, they're going to give him trouble just like and on giving Jeff Sessions all kinds of blues. But I think Ross will be prepared just like Jeff was, uh, just like Ryan Zinke was. And uh, Scott Pruitt is such a totally prepared person. He's going to do well. And um, our colleague Tom Price, he's going to do well. Uh, so they're going to come out swinging, bashing. Why? Because uh, that's what they do. They're unfair. And uh, we'll, I think they'll do fine. And in the end, they'll get confirmed. Congressman uh, Kingston. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything that they can ask these nominees that the nominees haven't already been asked for. They've been asked uh, collectively over 48,000 questions. They, they, they've really. <laughs>
reality drill these folks because, as Louis says, the Democrats are going to be Democrats. This is what they do. They can be really tough on Republican nominees, but when you get people of the caliber that Donald Trump has nominated, and we know Tom Price very well, and Ryan Zinke, and we'll know uh, Mick Mulvaney and so forth, these guys and Wilbur Ross, they're pros. They know how to an a answer these yeah, questions. Yeah, but what, as it relates specifically to Tom Price, what, what about the, uh, the ethics uh, conversation now? After uh, questionable stock purchases, they, they, they looked at his stock portfolio. He is being accused of buying shares in a medical device manufacturer just days before introducing legislation that would have benefited the company. You know, those questions are, are fair and legitimate, but I'm confident Tom's going to be able to answer it. As I understand, he had a broker who was acting independently on his own, would have no way of knowing what kind of legislation Tom was voting for or against. And it was a very small portion of stock. A, a, a small portion of his portfolio. Right. So I, I think he's going to be able to explain it that reasonable people would say, okay, I understand. Juan, what do you think? I think obviously the Democrats are sort of very curious about this and willing to press hard. Remember that we're really talking about the man who's in charge of dismantling the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. So you're going to a lot of people say, well, exactly how are you, Dr. Price, to say that you weren't profiting and manipulating stocks, as we just heard. His counter is, well, I wasn't directly in charge of those stocks. So I think that he's going to have a rough going over. Do I think it will sink him at this moment? I do not. But meanwhile, I just want to point out that for years, it was totally legal for Congress to be buying stocks, well, which, I, which I found just baffling when, <laughs> when I actually learned that. that was, yeah. But it was legal. It's, it's no longer legal, obviously. But Let, Let's be clear, and Congressman Kingston went through a lot of this. This was a diversified portfolio with Morgan Stanley that he did not manage. And to the degree that he may have gained from one of these investments, this particular one was a very nominal gain that he wasn't even aware of because, again, it was part of a larger portfolio. I think you see what's happening is Democrats are getting frustrated having watched how well-prepared Rex Tillerson was, mm -hmm. General Mattis was, clearly Jeff Sessions was, they're real, these were the guys they really were going to go after, yeah. except for Mattis, perhaps. Uh, they need to find somebody. Yeah. So they're going to try to go after Pruitt, who's extremely prepared and qualified. They're going to try to go after Price, who's extremely prepared and qualified, but they're not going to get very far. And Elizabeth Warren did her best yesterday on, Be on Betsy oh, DeVos, that's for sure. Betsy, yeah. Real quick, Congressman uh, Gomer, what, what's your priority once President-elect Trump takes office? What, what, do you, what do you think is likely in terms of law passing? The reason the parade's been shortened to an hour and a half, he's going to go in and start signing and make America free again. It's gonna, he's, got, he's got a pen. He's got a cell phone. What can be done with a pen and cell phone can be undone with a pen and cell phone. He's going to loosen the grip so America can live again. What do you think is going to be his number one uh, uh, pen and cell phone move? Well, he's going to undo so many of the regulations that this president, so many of the executive orders he signed uh, that really have hogtied America to keep us from growing uh, even less when, t when adjust for inflation, less than the Carter years. So America's hungry. It's to go. Tom Price was there uh, when the Democrats were in the majority for four years. He knows what unfair treatment is, so he'll be ready for this as well. All right, we'll leave it there. Congressman, good to have you on the program. It's great to be with you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Good Thank to see you. you, Congressman Louis Gomer, joining us. Juan Williams, great to